In this video, we will explore the process of sampling a signal. The idea of sampling is to create a discrete signal that is a signal that is only defined at specific points in time, as opposed to a continuous signal which is defined for all points in time. We will sample a continuous signal to create a discrete signal. The reason we want to do this is because digital processing, the kind used by computers and microcontrollers, must use discrete signals. Therefore, the process of sampling is critically important for all modern processing. The focus of this video will be to build up an intuition about sampling. So suppose that we start with a continuous function of time, for example something like this, and we want to sample this signal. So let's call this original signal x of t, it's just some function. To sample the signal, we will look at the value of the signal at distinct points in time. So specifically, we'll look at this point and we'll represent it with this kind of a stick and another point right here and then at subsequent points that are spaced the same as each one of these points. So we have this uniform sampling scheme where the distance between any two of these is going to be a fixed t sub s this sampling period or sampling time. And if we want to know what the actual values of these are, all we have to do is plug in these times into our function for x. So for example, let's say that this is at time 0. This is going to be x of 0. That's what the value of this point is. This one is x of t sub s. So we plug in t sub s into our formula for x of t, and we get this value right here. And this one would be x of 2 t sub s, x of 3 t sub s, and so on. Therefore, we can write x of n t sub s, that is our function for the sampled signals right here, and that's going to be equal to we define this as x of n in brackets, where n is going to be an integer. This is the notation for a discrete sampled kind of a signal, where n is an integer, it's just going to be 0 or 1 or 2 or whatever the multiplier on t sub s is to obtain the value that we desire. So another way to write the same signal then, the sampled signal would be x of 0, x of 1, x of 2, and so on, instead of having to write t sub s every single time. So now, this is a signal that is purely in terms of the sample number, as opposed to the time at which this value actually occurs. So now we have a signal that is simply sample number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Just to formalize some of these definitions, that I've been using these terms, t sub s is referred to as the sampling period. And a more commonly used metric is f sub s, which is equal to 1 over t sub s. And this is called the sampling frequency or the sampling rate. Both of these things refer to the same thing. So at this point, sampling seems pretty straightforward, but there are several intricacies that we have to take into account. Suppose that now, instead of starting from a continuous time signal and looking at the sampled signal, we're going to start with some samples, maybe something like this, and now our question is, well, what is the signal, the original continuous time signal that was sampled to create this discrete time signal, these samples right here? Well, intuitively, we might say it's probably going to be something smooth that goes through these points, so maybe something like this. But in reality, there is no one right answer. In fact, an infinite number of potential continuous time signals can go through the same set of samples. For example, I could have had this as the original. 
which also goes to the same samples. The point is that if I choose my T sub S to be the specific value that I have chosen right here, then sampling both the black and the blue signal will give me the same exact sample sequence because at those points in time the signal values are exactly the same. And of course we can take it a step further and introduce another signal and like I said there are really infinitely many signals that go through the same set of samples. When we choose which one a set of samples refers to we choose the smoothest one that goes through the sample. So in this case, we would probably choose the black one as the one that we would say created this sequence of samples. And this is simply because we don't really know any better. There is no reason to assume that either the blue or the green signal created these samples. We have to assume that our sample rate was high enough or T sub S was small enough to capture all the variations in the signal that we're interested in and therefore the black one is the one that we would choose as the one that created these samples. So this is just something to keep in mind whenever sampling comes up. We can gain some further intuition by thinking about how fast we have to sample a particular continuous time signal in order to capture all of its variations. So suppose now we are starting with a continuous time signal that looks like this. And our first attempt at sampling is going to place a sample here, here, and here, and so on, spaced by, let's say, T sub S1. Now, we can see that the smoothest possible signal that we might choose to reconstruct it here is probably not going to be the black one. It's probably going to be something more like this dotted red signal right here. That is a smoother kind of version of connecting these sample dots than the black one. So if we were given just the set of red samples, and of course we don't know anything about the black signal that actually created it, once we have sampled we lose that information because we only know the values at these particular points in time, we would probably say that it was created, the set of samples, by this dashed red line which is incorrect. However, had we sampled at a faster rate or a smaller T sub S, suppose we still have this first red one, but then we also sample at these points. Now you can see that in fact we capture all of the variations of the signal with this T sub S2, the smaller sample period or faster sample rate, and the reconstructed signal, that is, if we were to go back to a continuous time signal from our samples, would indeed be the black signal, because that is now the smoothest signal that goes through this blue set of samples. Now at this point we haven't really shown anything mathematically, but hopefully you now have a better understanding or intuition of why the sample rate actually matters for a particular signal, and why some sample rates are going to be fast enough while others are not going to be fast enough for a particular signal and this is something that we will explore further in later videos. Overall we have seen what sampling means and how to perform it. Turning a continuous time signal into a discrete time signal. We have also seen why we cannot use an arbitrary sampling rate but rather one that somehow corresponds to the properties of the signal we are analyzing. In the next video we will get some more intuition about what could go wrong if we sample too slowly.